Salutations, gentle viewers. This is George from Ireland, um, and this is part of my series on uh, Russian and indeed Soviet history for A level. So, this video is about the foundation of the Soviet state. So, uh, I got to the end of the Russian Civil War, which was roughly 1921. The whites didn't surrender as such, there was no peace negotiation. Um, the whites just gradually stopped fighting, been pushed out, fled abroad. A little bit of a uh, guerrilla resistance was quashed by uh, the communist uh, government. Um, so uh, Moscow was the capital, because when the Finns threatened to storm uh, St. Petersburg in 1918, um, the uh, Soviet government, or the Bolshevik government, I should say, shifted the capital to Moscow, where it had been up until 1704, and uh, Moscow remains the capital of Russia to this day. Um, so that was that. Another important thing in 1918 is uh, Russia adopted the Gregorian calendar. That's the calendar the rest of the world uses. So they jump forward 12 days. They uh, cast aside the um, Julian calendar. Um, so Lenin had um, said that the uh, nationalities, that meant all the non-Russian ethnicities of the Russian Empire, were entitled to national self-determination. Bizarrely, he saw eye to eye with um, that paragon of liberal bourgeois uh, capitalism, uh, Woodrow Wilson, president, president of the United States. So if these other ethnic groups wish to go independent, then their wish shall be granted. However, Lenin would, would prefer if they opted to throw in their lot with Russia. So there's a much vaunted, vaunted notion of uh, self-determination, but uh, Lenin soon thought the better of that. Um, so Armenia was an independent country, as was Azerbaijan, the Democratic Republic, with the capital at Ganja, because um, Baku was still in the hands of Russian whites and Reds, bizarrely. Well, I'll talk about that in another video. Um, but anyway, um, only uh, two years later, Lenin um, conspired with uh, Turkey to put paid to Armenia. So Ataturk um, was ruling Turkey at the time. So the uh, Russians invaded from the north and the Turks from the south, and Armenia was vanquished. Mount Ararat, upon which Noah's Ark uh, came to rest, if you believe uh, the Holy Bible, that was Armenian territory, now it's in Turkey. Um, so the Transcaucasian so Socialist Soviet Republic was founded, which was Armenia, Azerbaijan, and uh, Georgia. So on the 28th of April, 1920, um, the uh, Red Army, uh, finally took over um, uh, Azerbaijan. They'd lost control of Baku um, in September 1918, but they re-entered 1920. So this Transcaucasian SSSR, sorry, SSR, was founded. Um, uh, Azerbaijanis and Armenians are at each other's throats these days. Well, there was a bit of that in 1920, some ethnic cleansing. Um, so the Bolsheviks also established the Ukrainian uh, Soviet Socialist Republic, the Belarusian SSR, and the Central Asian SSSR. Central Asian one is what we now call Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, Uzbekistan, um, um, Turkmenistan, I don't think I've any left, left any out. But the Central um, Asian ones think TTKKU, or maybe easier alphabetical order, KKTTU, that's five of them. Um, uh, they, they were then, um, most of it was Kyrgyzstan. Bizarrely, later Kazakhstan was broken off Kyrgyzstan even though Kazakhstan's ten times larger in area than Kyrgyzstan. So um, the government in Moscow didn't effectively control uh, Central Asia until about 1936. Not all of it. Some of the cities, some of the northern or western part, yes, the government of Moscow did control, but didn't establish effectual control over the whole area until 1936. So uh, Russia itself was a Soviet Socialist Federative Republic, because there were lots of... Um, uh, units within Russia, autonomous oblasts. An oblast is a region for minor ethnicities such as Tatars or Chechens, autonomous republics as well for Bashkirs and so forth. So um, Russia is a smorgasbord of different um, ethnic groups, most of them are Christian, some of them are Muslim, all with their own language. So um, by 1922, the Ukraine, Belarus, Transcaucasia, and Central Asia and Russia were all communist in legal theory. Um, and they were supposedly fully sovereign states, but uh, they were in alliance. And then in December 1922, an announcement was made for the stage of the Bolshoi Theatre in Moscow, which is uh, Russia's most estimable theatre, really it's best known for ballet rather than drama. 
um, that these uh, Soviet Socialist Republics were pooling their sovereignty. And this marked the foundation of the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics, USSR, often called the Soviet Union. Uh, so the word Soviet became a demonym, as in that's the name of the nationality, a bit like British for the United Kingdom. And remember, Soviet was originally a council, a workers, a soldiers, a sailors council, factories, farm workers, tram workers, anything like that. They'd formed, they'd, they'd elected representatives to councils in their factory, in their military regiment, whatever it was. And eventually delegates from all these Soviets meeting in a Soviet for the city or for the region and so on. That was the idea. So a word meaning a bit like council became the name of a nationality because it was really the Russian Empire under a new guise, but mustn't call it Russian because they were rejecting national chauvinism and they realised it would not play well with those um, who uh, didn't like to be dominated by those of the Russian ethnicity. Ukrainians were sometimes called Little Russians, other countries sometimes called Black Russia because it's a black soil. Belarus, as in White Russia. It was by no means obvious who was Belarus and who wasn't. In the cities of Belarus, people usually spoke Russian. In the countryside, they usually spoke Belarusian, which is closely related to Russian. Likewise, in the Ukraine, it was far from obvious who was Ukrainian and who was Russian. Some people had a foot in both camps. Um, some people just considered themselves to be a peasant or a Christian. They're almost the same word in Russian and were scarcely aware of any uh, nationality. Um, so uh, the uh, Soviet Union had its foundation treaty and it was enshrined in that that any of the uh, um, Soviet Socialist Republics was entitled to withdraw from the Union at any time. Uh, so a new flag was invented well, they've been using this red banner for a while with a five-pointed hollow uh, gold star, the gold hammer and sickle. They considered having a sword in it as well, but Vladimir, Vladimir Ilyich Lenin said that was too uh, bellicose. Um, anyway, so uh, the official language of the USSR was Russian because that was the mother tongue of 50% of the population and it was most widely comprehended by uh, the rest of the people. Of course, there were large minorities who did not speak Russian. Plenty of Azerbaijanis didn't speak Russian at all. Most Kazakhs would not have spoken it at all. Even some of the ethnic minorities, not everybody in Tatarstan, um, which is uh, well within Russia, in, in um, the Urals would have spoken it. People in the Far East, like Chukchi people and the Koreans in the Far East, some of them spoke no Russian at the time. Um, so the national anthem was the Internationale, or Internationale, as we sometimes call it in English. It's by um, John Connell, an Irishman. Arise, ye prisoners of starvation. Uh, arise, ye wretched of the earth, tis the final battle, as in it's a clarion call to arms for socialist revolutionaries, saying that they were wage slaves, to be kept just above the grave by people who paid them poverty pay, and they were malnourished from this, and they must have a revolution. No faith of we in Prince or Peer, so no monarchy, no aristocracy, uh, it goes on. Um, so it was meant to be about internationalism, socialist solidarity, emancipating the working class the world over. Um, so in Central Asia, the Moscow's uh, writ did not run. Enver Pasha had been part of the triumvirate, which had ruled um, a Turkey from before the uh, First World War right through to the end. And after the Ottoman Empire had fallen apart, he fled to Central Asia. Uh, he had first um, uh, promised his support to the Reds, that they were an anti-Western force. However, he soon turned against him and he threw in his lot with the um, Bashami revolt. Um, he dreamed of replacing this extinct Ottoman Empire with a greater Turkic polity in Central Asia. Turkic, meaning similar to the Turks. His idea was to unite the Turks with the Azerbaijanis, uh, including the Azerbaijanis in what's now Iran, in Turkmenistan, Kyrgyzstan, Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, and so forth. Um, their languages are related, but it can be quite distantly related. It can be sort of like English to Swedish could be definitely different languages, even though there is a common root there. Um, they're Muslims to a man. Most of them are Sunni, a few of them are Shia, but he said that doesn't matter, we're all Turks. Um, some of them were actually Johnny come late least to Islam, only, only converting as late as the 17th century. Um, so at the close of the Russian Civil War, the Red Army was able to spare some men and send troops to Central Asia to try to quell this uh, separatist revolt. revolt. Anyway. Central Asia is a vast area of steppe, mountain, uh, some desert forest, um, and so it was almost ungovernable, and people there were largely uh, itinerants. So how can you control nomads? They're wandering around all the time. 
the terrain is harsh and the climate is incredibly um, inhospitable. It was unforgiving if you don't have the right clothing in winter. But the Bashambi revolt was gradually squeezed out and finally snuffed out by the Red Army. Um, so the people in Central Asia became tired of fighting. Enver Pasha was killed in a, in a skirmish fairly early on. Mikhail Frunze had been born in Central Asia, half Russian, half Romanian, and he had helped to um, crush the Bashambi revolt. There was an element of Islamism to it as well. Um, because remember, the Ottoman Empire had been a Shariat state um, all the way through, and even up until 1924, uh, in a sense. 1922, the um, Turkish Republic was founded. But they actually had the the Sultan staying on as caliph, as successor to the Prophet Muhammad until 24. Only then did the uh, Turkish Republic have no state religion. Um, so with many Muslims at the time, it was hard to conceive of not having a state religion, a Sharia law. But anyway, 1931, it was only then that Moscow had finally put down the Bashami revolt, and a few more years before Moscow was firmly in control of the whole of Central Asia. One of the really uh, laudable things that the Red Army did uh, was to spread literacy. But I think that's time for another video.